Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I will be giving you some tips on how to really learn any language you wish. But yeah, it's just kind of tips to stay motivated and how to find the right method for you for whatever language you're learning. Now, this is not to say that I'm an expert in language learning. I am not a hyper polyglot or whatever, or whatever. I do not know 75 languages, um, but I'm just a mere language learner like all of you. I've been progressing in my languages, um, but I would only say I'm well versed in English and Spanish and maybe Italian's so like two and a half languages. But now obviously everyone's language learning journey is gonna look a little bit different because everyone learns differently. But yeah, I'll just be focusing on some general tips and giving you um, some information about my background and my language learning journeys that helps me progress uh, quicker. Just for some background and you know, for some insight in my language learning journeys, I started with Spanish about six years ago, and this is the only language that I actually took classes for. Um, that's kind of where it all began, and I'm definitely most pr proficient in my Spanish. And then about a year and a half ago, I started taking an interest in Italian. However, I didn't actually establish a routine for it, so I wasn't really getting much better. It wasn't, wasn't until about six months ago, or five or six months ago, that I actually was more consistent with my studying, and I've been progressing a lot faster with my Italian. Uh, and then within the past three or four months, I started learning some Chinese, and then uh, I picked up some Dutch in the, within the past two months. It was just kind of for fun, but um, yeah. I suppose I should mention that um, with Italian, Chinese, and Dutch, I didn't take classes for any of those. Those are just self-studies, just because I was merely interested in them. Um, so yeah, and I, I should also mention that, um, I should also say that self-studying a language is not necessarily less effective than taking courses and spending all that money on learning a language. Like, I almost feel like self-studying in a sense is almost better because it for me I think I can learn faster that way I can learn more I think it's more fun that way it's more open-ended um, and it's free or relatively cheap at the very least if you're going to invest in grammar books or other resources really for Italian I probably only spent 50 bucks total and I'm already pretty proficient at it I think um, but yeah I spent I have like this little Italian dictionary I have an AP Italian book and then like some other beginner's grammar book for Italian. And then for Chinese, I have a character book and I think there's one other book somewhere, but really, so not much, like probably 30, $40 spent on Chinese and 50 on Italian. It's like not that much, but yeah, really it's self-studying can be just as effective, if not more effective than um, people often think it can be. But anyway, let's just get right into my tips for learning a language. So the first thing I would do is, especially if you're learning like an East Asian language, like Japanese, Cantonese, Chinese, Korean, Thai, Vietnamese, etc., cetera, um, is to learn the alphabet. That seems pretty obvious, but um, like for Chinese, the first thing I did was um, learn the pinyin. So like the characters written using the Latin alphabet, that we use in English. So, or like with Korean, you'll probably wanna learn like the, uh, what do they call it, Hangul first. Like, just learn the like alphabet and pronunciation first, even with Romance languages or Germanic languages or whatever. Um, definitely learn the alphabet first because even if the Latin alphabet is still used, the way in which they pronounce the letters in whatever your target language is, is bound to be different. And by learning the pronunciation of all the different characters and or letters, when you come across like unfamiliar words that you've never seen before, you'll probably have a good idea of how to say them. And especially when you're speaking, your pronunciation is gonna sound a lot more authentic and you'll, well, thus sound more like a native speaker. So that's always where I like to start, just pronunciation, getting a feel for the, for the language and just kind of like dipping your feet into the water, if you will. So yeah, at least for me, that's definitely what I like to focus on first, just like the alphabet and pronunciation. The next thing that I should probably note is that 
you'll wanna find a method that works for you and that you'll be able to stick with because the most important thing about learning a language, especially if you're doing it on your own without some sort of language learning partner or instructor, you'll, you'll want to maintain consistency, motivation, and um, ensure that you're learning something new every single day. Even if you're just learning for 15 minutes a day, make sure that whatever you're doing is something new. Like, you don't wanna do too much, but you don't wanna do too little. You don't wanna review your language like two minutes a day, review the same thing over and over again for two minutes a day. But on the other hand, and this is what I tend to do, especially when I'm just starting learning, learning a new language, is I'll say, oh, I'm gonna work like four hours a day. I'm so determined to get this language down. I'm gonna be fluent in three months. Um, you know, that never ends up happening really. So make sure it's something that you'll be able to be consistent with, um, not too ambitious. I mean, you want to um, be ambitious with setting your goals, but not like, not unrealistic. So yeah, just be careful with that. Just don't exhaust yourself, don't tire yourself because language learning is supposed to be fun. So don't make it a chore if it doesn't need to be. Um, but yeah. Just whatever you do, make sure you're learning something new every day, whether it's new vocab, new grammatical structures, idioms, characters, some sort of cultural piece to whatever language you're studying. Whatever you do, just make sure that you have some sort of schedule that you can stick to. It just make sure that it's enjoyable and engaging for you. Additionally, I would also get a notebook for whatever language you're learning. I suppose if you're learning Chinese or Japanese, um, not everyone who's learning a language like that uh, will want to master the writing aspect of it so you are more than welcome to like type notes if you want but for me I like to write things down for example for Italian I have a um, notebook with three different sections three different tabs in it one for vocabulary one for grammar and one for verb tenses and conjugations um, and then for Chinese I have a notebook too I don't really have like divided sections for it. I just work through like whatever page I left off on. So I just work through chronologically. And when I do that, and this kind of leads to my next point really, you'll want to make sure you're going about your language learning in a logical order. So what I mean by this is, let's say that for instance, like me, you wanted to start learning Italian. And let's say that you're going to start learning the subjunctive tense. So il congiuntivo in Italian. Um, before you actually start learning that though, you'll want to have a good idea of what the subjunctive tense actually is, what might trigger the subjunctive, like clauses that trigger it, and like when to use it. Because in English, our subjunctive tense is essentially extinct, pretty much extinct if not getting there. Um, for example, we wouldn't say something like, I advise you that you close the window. Like, we wouldn't say that. So my point is you kind of want to have a feel for novel ideas before you actually jump into them and make sure that you have the foundational skills to tackle whatever you're going to do next. If you're just starting out with language learning or whatever your target language is, maybe look up the like 100 most common verbs, phrases or nouns or idioms or characters or whatever. I know I did that for Italian. I started with like just most common verbs and with Chinese, I started with the most common characters that you'll see um, just so that you have a good foundation and just recognize a good amount of the language from the get-go and then whatever you do from there on out like the next day and the day after that and so on make sure that whatever you do it builds off of what you did the previous day just so that you're not learning a random assortment of skills just day to day like one day you're working on vocabulary for the airport and the next day you're working on the conditional tense you know what I mean so make sure that it's kind of you're working through everything and building upon what you're learning logically. That way you're connecting your prior knowledge with new input. Cause after all, that's how our brain works. It's essentially a bunch of interneuronal connections and it's precisely how we learn. So it's much more effective than just choosing random topics to learn. Next, and this may seem fairly obvious, but you'll wanna make sure that you set specific goals for yourself. Obviously the overarching goal for all of us language learners is to become fluent and sound as authentic as we can. But you'll wanna make sure you have daily, weekly, and or monthly, however you wanna do it, um, just shorter, shorter term goals. That way you'll stay motivated. For me, making a checklist and just ticking off the boxes is, pretty, is a pretty nice feeling because I can actually see myself making 
progress and it's super encouraging and keeps me motivated and wanting to learn more and pursue my languages every day. Um, for example, this week for Italian, I'm just practicing becoming more comfortable speaking and using the passato de moto and the passato prossimo um, correctly because oftentimes with passato prossimo, um, there's two auxiliary verbs and you have to differentiate between them and passato de moto has a lot of irregulars. So this week I'm just practicing my speaking and becoming more co uh, confident in those. So it's super specific and I have a specific goal in mind. So like that's kind of what I would keep in mind when you're creating your goals. Just make sure it's uh, pretty specific. And then kind of the last bit of information that I'm gonna touch on is like the four foundational skills of learning a language, like the four foundational skills that we would all like to master um, being listening and comprehending native speakers, reading, um, speaking, and writing. So yeah, obviously of the four, speaking is definitely the trickiest to master, but it's definitely probably the most useful one because um, when you're speaking your target language, you want to make sure that you're understood and articulating your ideas clearly. So yeah, I'll kind of give you guys some insight on how I've been practicing these four things. So with listening, um, especially with Italian, that's actually the principal way in which I've been learning it. So like right from the get go, like, and when I started learning Italian, especially when I started doing it consistently and seriously, um, I already had Spanish pretty like much under my belt and I was pretty confident in my Spanish. So I was already able to recognize a lot of the phrases in Italian just because the two languages are pretty similar. So just, it was super rewarding to kind of uh, be able to listen to native speakers or podcasts or films in Italian and kind of understand a little bit, like very little, but um, the cool thing about listening to podcasts or songs or films or whatever in your target language is that oftentimes if you, if I'm listening and trying to understand as much as I can just by context clues and like the visuals and whatever, I start to pick up on phrases, like repeated phrases that I hear over and over again. And without even having to use a translator or, um, you know, see the words and how they're spelled or whatever, I can oftentimes kind of predict and figure out what they mean. So there are, there are times where I've been speaking Italian and using phrases that I never explicitly taught myself. They're just ones that I remember hearing um, in podcasts or films, which is super cool. So it's like almost as if you're learning without even realizing that you're learning, which is kind of cool. That would basically just be my advice for listening. I mean, you could even look up on YouTube, like just SpongeBob films in Italian. Like I've watched a lot of the older SpongeBob episodes. So I pretty much knew everything that was going on. I knew everything in English. So when they're saying it in Italian, I pretty much know what's going on. So you kind of pick up on new words that way or find some songs. Like I have some great Italian songs on my phone. Um, if you need any suggestions, let me know. But yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing for listening. Um, and then with reading, I go to, um, for Italian anyway, I just look up some news articles in Italian. I use this one site called um, uh, Corriere, Corriere de la Sera. Uh, let me double check that. I have my computer open right here. It's, yeah, yeah. Corri I can't roll my R's, but it's, it has a double R there. It's Corriere de la Sera. So it's like an, an uh, online Italian newspaper, like news site. Um, and what I do when I'm reading these articles is I read them out loud to myself. So that way I'm engaging in reading, speaking and listening. So like kind of hearing myself um, speak and just practicing pronunciation and reading and comprehension. So it's kind of integrating multiple skills that I'm wanting to practice. And, you know, it's kind of cool because you're getting to practice your language learning um, while, be, you know, becoming more globally informed. So it's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say for reading. Just find some like news articles or something. That's what I do anyway. Um, or get like a book or something. I think I'm considering starting to read some audiobooks in Italian if I can find some good free ones to, to look at, but um, yeah, that's what I would say for that. And then for speaking, I would definitely recommend, if possible, getting a language learning partner, um, just like a native speaker that will be able to help you with the more intricate details of the language and the idiomatic and colloquial use of the language. 
Um, if you don't, however, it's totally fine. What I do sometimes, um, since I don't really have a Spanish speaking partner, um, actually I've been having some, some friends of mine help me with Italian. So I have some friends for Italian, which is nice, but for Spanish, I really don't. So, um, I will often just like narrate to myself, like what I'm doing, like, oh, like now I'm grabbing something from the fridge. Like, oh, now I'm getting dressed or whatever. Like I'll just narrate to myself, talk to myself in the mirror or in the shower or something. Like I know it sounds super lame and like dumb or whatever, but honestly it works. So, you know, you're practicing speaking. Um, if you want to pair up with like a native speaker of your target language, you could definitely get, there are certain apps out there. Um, I've used HelloTalk and Tandem before. Of the two though, definitely get HelloTalk. It's a lot, um, I think it's a lot better. Tandem, well, okay, so I had both apps at one point, but I deleted both of them, but Tandem was definitely much less about learning languages and it's more about socializing with people uh, from uh, different parts of the world. Um, so if that's more your thing, then you can go with Tandem, but um, I think HelloTalk is a lot more for those who are actually looking to learn a language. Um, if that's your thing, you can definitely look for apps like that as well. And then so in order to get good at writing in your target language, what I do occasionally, sometimes I'll just write, well, I'll, I'll write down my notes in my target language, of course, but I'll also often um, like just write like a little journal entry, just basically what I did today. Like today I, went to the store, I don't know, went to the store and got this, 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 I don't know. That way you're going to be using words that are relevant to you, phrases that are relevant to you, um, just because you're basically explaining, describing what you did today. So they're gonna be relevant words and phrases to you, to your everyday life. So I think that's a super nice way to expand your vocabulary and you know, really only learn the words that you really need to know. Cause there were several times in my Spanish class where we were in a unit, like say on the airport or sports or something where a lot of the terms we learned weren't super relevant to everyday life. So really by doing like, by just kind of writing down what you did in a given day, um, you're gonna be using the words that are relevant to your everyday life. So I feel like that's super uh, helpful. And then my last little tidbit would be to just enjoy it and have fun with it because if you're not having fun with it then you're doing it wrong i hate to break it to you but if you're not having fun if you if you're not looking forward to learning your language and you're just kind of dreading doing it and it's becoming a chore then you're not doing it right and you need to find a different method um i know I'm just, I'm kind of weird in that I actually do enjoy the grammar parts of learning a language. That's actually one of my favorite things. But I know a lot of people get really scared and um, like they are kind of not looking forward to learning a language just because of the grammar part of it. But honestly though, if you don't want to like learn the grammar directly, you don't have to. by uh, Just by listening to native speakers speak, I think you'll pick up on a lot of things that way. So um, actually for me, when I was listening to Italian, I picked up on the conjugations and like the use of the subjunctive tense pretty easily since it's, well, one, pretty similar to Spanish and uh, two, the conjugations are pretty similar to Spanish as well. And so I guess my point is just that um, by listening to the language, just listening and really immersing yourself, that's the key, just immersing yourself in the language and constantly being exposed to it. Um, I think you'll pick up on a lot of things that way. So just my number one thing would just be to have fun with it and just constantly be listening to it um, more than anything. Just constantly be immersed in it. Um, actually, my phone settings right now, my phone is in Italian right now. So you can change your phone language if you feel comfortable enough with your target language already. Um, so yeah, if you're into language learning apps, um, I've used Fluence and I am using Fluence for Chinese. Um, I guess that's on my computer, but I've also heard some great things about Pimslur, Babbel, LingQ, not sponsored, but um, those are just some apps that I've heard really great things about. Um, if you're looking for something beyond the world of Duolingo and Rosetta Stone, because honestly, those aren't that great. If you're gonna ask me, like Duolingo, especially for Chinese, not, not good. Um, and Rosetta Stone, not the greatest, but yeah. 
Really, that's all I have for you. Just ha enjoy it, have fun with it. If you have any questions in the comments, again, I'm not an expert, but I definitely am more than available and willing to answer any questions that you guys have. So if any of you are learning Spanish and or are taking AP Spanish language um, this coming year or in the future, I also have a video on that. But yeah, I, I just, my last video was um, on how to score a five on the AP Spanish exam. So if that's a video of interest to you, you can also check that out. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys next time.